Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, how are we doing today? Hi, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it's, been, it's been different emotions uh, raging the, the country, but as believers, what can we do? We stand placed in the we stand firm in the place of prayers, right? Because at the end of the day, God is the ruler of these nations. So even though we have a democratically elected president and all of that, but God rules the nation. God rules the nation. So just know that your father, at the end of the day, he's the ruler of the nation. Um, and these two pass, right? So today, uh, it's going to be a quick conversation. Um, I just want to share on, um, there's a topic that I, I listened to, I heard, uh, I think two years now. Um, I just want to share on, on that today, and it is making room for the new, right? Making room for the new. Um, literally, the statement means the new is, new is going to come. Are we making room for the new? So the first scripture that I'm going to read is from Leviticus. But before I read the scripture, I'll just quickly say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Um, even as I speak your word to your people, Father, thank you for calming the spirits on this call in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you for bringing solace to them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your love envelopes and wraps them in this very moment in the name of Jesus. Father, open the understanding of their hearts to hear your word and receive it this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so Leviticus 26 verse 10. Leviticus 26 verse 10. And it says, you will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to make, you have to move it out to make room for the new. I'll read it again. You'll still be eating last year's harvest when you have, when, when you will have to move it out to make room for the new. Um, and, you know, reading, I read this, this, uh, scripture very often you know i'm like okay that means there's a lot that's coming and what i currently have <clears throat> i'll need to like make room for the new but to access the new what needs to happen you know it's very easy to lay claim to scriptures oh god says the new is coming so um, that's it. But what, what do you need to do to access the new? Many of us are still holding on to the old. Like you are having a, an alliance with the old. You can't receive the new. You can't receive new miracles when you're holding on to the old. You also cannot receive new miracles with old mindsets, right? So the thing about new is that one, you have to believe that new is coming to you. So, you know, sometimes when you hear some scriptures or you hear a man of God, woman of God preaching and you're like, mm, well, I don't know, like, the, what they're saying and your reality is so far apart that they're like, I don't think this one is for me, right? I was like, well, maybe I'm still at XYZ level. Why? Why do we have that? And this is like, this is real. I've done it many times in the past. And why do we have that reality? Because we have put labels on who we are. You've labeled yourself and said, oh, I am just a student. I am just an entry level 
um, employee. I am just, I am just, I am just, you have labeled yourself. Is that what God calls you? Many times we give ourselves labels that God hasn't called. Oh, I'm just a this, I am but a this, I am but no. What has God called you? Because when you hold on to labels that God hasn't given you, right? How do you want to make room for the new? So sometimes some of, some of the things we do limit us receiving the new. So one question that I want us to ask ourselves this morning is, what am I holding that is old? What is that old thing that I'm holding? Because let me tell you something, there is a new way to do everything. And sometimes we hold on to the old because it is familiar. It's very familiar, extremely familiar. So we hold on to it. So they're like, bad as it bad, I have this. But when you are holding on to this, when you're holding on to that old, oh, that's your bad as it bad, I have this, you are telling God that you don't trust him. And you are saying the word with your mouth, but you don't trust that he can, he can sort your situation out. Why? Because you are holding on to the past. So what happens is your mind is being practical. Your mind is telling you, uh, your mind is showing you your reality and your spirit is saying, but God promised us the new. So there's a conflict already in your mind, between your mind and your spirit, because one is holding on to the old and the other one is saying, oh, but there is new. So there has to be a, a realignment of your mind and your spirit. Your mind has to come to realization that this is it. This is it. We are asking God for the new. You know, there's there's a there's a saying. I, I, can't, I can't remember the man who actually said it. He said, "If you watch the wind, you will never set out." So the, your mind is the wind watcher. Is the one telling you, uh, the uh, it's about to rain. or we're not going. Right. It's, it's telling you all, the, it's showing you all the realities. And so there's a contradiction with the word of God. For some of us, it's only when things are going fine that we believe in the word of God. So currently we're going through stuff and we're like, I don't understand this new thing that God has said for yeah, um, see, this is what is going on in my life currently. Just because the devil started it does not mean God cannot use that situation to turn things around. I feel like what God is trying to tell us this morning is that we should trust him enough. We should trust him enough. I keep hearing trust. Trust him enough. We, whatever you have, you are in the you are in the nine to five. Trust him with your job. Like bring God into that job and watch him bring something new into your career. If you're an entrepreneur, hand over your business to him. Trust him with your business that he understands stuff. You know, sometimes when I sit down to write my my plans in my business. Because I'm a, I'm a strategist, I'm a marketing and sales expert. I've done that all my life. I've strategized for some of the biggest companies in the world. So I sit down and I'm just writing and I hear God tell me sometimes like, what you ask me? You know, cause I'm like, yo, this is my thing, this is my turf. But it's like, what you ask me? And I have seen the experiment sometimes where, one, where I'm like, okay, God, what, how do I market this product? And he just gives me one idea, that one idea, there was, there was one day, that one idea, I executed it. I made about 90 sales from that one thing. I'm like, oh, wow, 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 wow. Even me with all my, all my marketing glory, I'm shouting marketing, the boosts up and down. I have never thought of an idea that just one, one thing I did. Of course, I have to do a couple of things 
But just one thing I did, I hit that 90 sales. And he just told me that God wants to be involved in every aspect. God, he cannot bring that new. So if I was still holding on to the old, like, oh, I know this marketing thing, I will never have realized that I can just do one thing in under an hour and make 90 sales. Never, ever. That is a practical example of the fact that there's, there's so much. You, you, there's so much. You, you have to make room for it. There's so much that God can be doing, but we limit him. We limit him with our self-doubt. We limit him with our peers. We limit him with the labels that we have placed on ourselves. We limit him with the thoughts that the devil has placed in our head. So the challenge is you need to trust God, even when things are not looking great, even when it is uncertain. You need to trust God because your faith will always sleep when you, are, when you start consulting your fears. Let me repeat. Your faith will always sleep when you start consulting your feelings, when you start consulting your fears, because when you sit in that space and you're like, ah, everything is looking bleak, your faith begins to sleep. It begins to wear out. So every time we need to stand firm in his promises. Another reason why some of us have not experienced the new is that we haven't trained our minds to stop collecting negative evidence. So, so it, and it's, it's a thing that, so this is not even, it's not spiritual. This is the thing that the mind does. Your mind, your entire body, every day is trying to help you not, not get hurt, right? So there are different reflexes that are in your body. That's why, for instance, if you are scared of snakes, when you see a snake, you will not remember how you ran from Lagos to Ibadan. Or your body will send fear and you, you may just be frozen to the ground. Why? It's trying to alert you that, hey, there's something uncomfortable that we are not aligned with that is coming or is around you. And depending on how far either you are running or you stay frozen and can't do anything or something, but there's an alert system that has been triggered. It's the same thing. When you are confessing that you, the new is coming, but your mind starts collecting evidence. How many, let me ask, how many of us have ever been in a situation where you are confessing something, but your mind is collecting evidence? So maybe you're confessing, oh, I receive, maybe I receive my husband, or I receive a good job, or I, or I am wealthy. Oh, you know when they tell you to say I am wealthy, I am rich, I receive money in different denominations, and you are saying that prayer, but your mind is collecting evidence that, oh, <laughs> with our 5,000 naira bank alert, ah, wow, 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 you that have never ever seen money in the dollars or pounds, wow, well, how do you want to collect money in different denominations? Your mind is bringing is collecting the different evidence of things that have ex that exist. And so you are saying something with your mouth, but your mind is collecting a different evidence. You need, your entire body needs to be in alignment with the promise of God. Because we live in uncertain times, especially if you live in my beloved country, Nigeria is uncertain times. You know, you sit down and wonder, how is the government this swift to ban us from Twitter? This swift, they make the declaration today. And by tomorrow, we are young talk and people are looking for VPNs and Wi-Fi's up and down to access it. Whereas we've been asking for so many things for so long and it's not coming. So yeah, like what's going to happen? You see, the fact that they were able to quickly activate that, it tell, I, I choose to look at it from a different side that that's how quickly, that's how quickly the change will come. The change that we are looking for, that's how quickly it will come. You see that was swiftly. 
the way they swiftly shut us out of the platform by speeding many people, that's how swiftly God will change the nation. So it's doable. So don't look at the green that, oh, wow, everything is now, you know, look at the fact that if they were able to turn it around in 24 hours, that means there are so many things that they're going to turn around in this country for good, for the good of the nation, for the good of the people. Guys, make room for the new. <laughs> the new is coming. It's coming in the country. We've already seen that's the evidence. You are collecting negative evidence. No! From today, you are going to start collecting positive evidence because the new is coming. What's the positive evidence that the new is coming in our nation? Is the fact that a government that is as sloppy as it gets were able to turn around a declaration in 24 hours. This is the slowest government in the history of Nigeria, but they were able to turn something around in 24 hours. That's the evidence I'm collecting. It tells me that that means they can turn on 24 hours power in 24 hours. That means they can sort out many policy issues in 24 hours because this issue needed to go to the, it didn't go to the house. They did not, they didn't sit on, they didn't deliberate it. It didn't go first reading, second reading. They turned this around once flipped it like this, turned it, they bypassed, they bypassed protocol, they bypassed the legal system, they bypassed it. They, they by, the Minister of Information has no jurisdiction to announce such declaration, but he did, which tells me that God will swiftly, you need to start collecting positive evidence, it's already happening, <laughs> it's already happening. They could do that in 24 hours, they will find the missing children in 24 hours. They will give us good power in 24 hours. They will fix the economy in 24 hours. They can do that in 24 hours. Uh. That's the evidence you need to start collecting. It's happening. And in your personal life, start collecting positive evidence. Start collecting positive evidence. Don't all those, it's not working, I'm just tired no customer, um, no increase in my salary, no promotion, no good friend, no husband, bank, bank balance is 10 pounds, dump all the negative evidence. Start collecting positive evidence. Believe that God will do it. Let me read it again. So you say, what did he say? He says, you will be, you'll still be eating last year's harvest when you have to move it out to make room for the new. Brethren, the new is coming. The question that I want to ask you is, are you ready to receive the new? Are you ready to receive it? Or your mind and your spirit are not yet in alignment. Your entire body needs to be in alignment with the word that God has spoken over your life. Pray it into existence. Pray it into it. There's, a, there's a, there's a, a last Bible verse that I'm going to read and then we'll say a prayer and go about our days. Let me quickly open it in Jeremiah. Jeremiah. I should help with the passage. The passage is Leviticus 26 verse 10. Leviticus 26 verse 10. That's what I've been, that's what I've been talking about. I'm reading from the New International Version. Okay, so let me quickly turn my Bible to Jeremiah. Hallelujah. I hope somebody is blessed today. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 13. Praise the Lord. It says, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It says, for I know the plans I have for you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's 11. So this looks like the last one I read where it says you'll still be eating the old when you have to make room for the new, right? And here it's saying I have plans for you. Plans to give you hope and a future. But this is where we end. No. Verse 12. Then you will call on me 
and come and pray to me. So it's not enough to say, oh, God has plans for me. Oh, good, we're rolling. He got plans. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Hallelujah. So the thing that you need to do for your mind and your spirit to be in alignment with the word of God is right here in Jeremiah 12 and 13. You're going to call on God. You're going to pray it into existence. You will seek him. Seeking him means you are studying the word. You are looking for him. And then, 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 it says I will be found by you, declares the Lord in um, verse 14. It says you will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you. I'll leave us with that passage. Go and align your being, align your entire body to the word of God. Let me show you this. I started this, I started this today. I want to realign my, my business to the word of God. It's called Recalibrate for Entrepreneurs. If you're an entrepreneur, you need to have this. Um, it's by Fonto Iboye. Because uh, God, for a while, now God has been telling me, hand over your business to me. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you have come again. <laughs> but I finally got this. I was led to this and I've just started this morning, right? Align your entire being to God. Align everything. See, we're nothing without him. Align, if, if you're a business person, align your business with him. Align your marriage to him. Align your career to him. Align everything. Because this new is not just finance. It's not just money. This new is joy. You'll be like, you'll be in your mind, you'll be like, ah, this is my, well, this is my marriage, we are happy. He's going to bring new joy. He's going to bring deeper connection. And you're like, whoa, wow, well, wow, well, I didn't know that I can enjoy this thing like this. You will be in your office and he's going to bring new, he'll bring either new assignments, new roles. Make room for new. Let's just pray for a minute and tell God that we are ready for new. <clears throat> just tell him, speak to your father and tell him, I am ready for new. Father, Lord, I am ready for new. Father, I am ready. You're muted. Oh boy, what did you hear last? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes we can. What you knew was what we had left. Oh, okay. Did you hear what I said? Let's pray. Let's yes. pray for the new. That was what you said. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm saying let's pray for the new, right? Let's pray this morning and tell God to handle, tell him that we're handing over, hand over that situation to him and tell him you are ready for the new. Whatever it is, is it your career? Hand it over. Is it your business? Hand it over. Is it your finance, your money? Hand it over. What is that thing that you are holding on to? Is it your fear? Hand it over. 
this your feelings, hand it over and tell God, Father, Lord, we are ready for the new. Hallelujah. Tell him you are ready to receive the new. You know, and I was saying, I did I was on mute, I was saying that there's a visual representation of, of that scripture that said you still be eating of the old and then you have to make room, that make room for the new. Do you remember the widow where she had to borrow jars? Guess what? The blessing stopped when the jars were exhausted. The blessing did what? It stopped when the jars were exhausted. They were pouring, pouring oil, was pouring. When did the oil flow stop? It stopped when there was no more jar. So hold that picture in your head. Hold that picture in your head. There will be so much. There'll be there's so much. That new is so much. You will look for room for the new. But are you ready for the new? Tell God that you want to align your entire being to his word, to his promises for you. Just tell him you are ready for new. Tell him you are ready for new. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people, oh Lord. But we thank you for, we will start receiving, we'll stop collecting evidence for negative in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, we receive, we collect positive, positive, positive in the mighty name of Jesus. We collect positive evidence. Oh Lord, we thank you for we realign ourselves to your word. But we thank you for we receive, we receive the new, we receive the new. Father, we thank you. We stand on the promises of your word and we receive the new in whatever situation, we receive the new in our health. We receive the new in our finance. We receive the new in our faith with you. We receive the new, O oh Lord, in ministry. We receive the new in winning souls, O oh Lord. We receive the new in our business. We receive the new in our careers. We receive the new in our relationships. We receive the new in our marriages. We receive the new. We receive it in our nation. We receive the new. Father, we see what you are doing. We see what you are doing. And we will only receive, we will only collect positive. We will only collect positive. And we receive the new. We will wake up into a new dawn, into a new day, Father. We receive the new. We let go of our fears. We let go of our feelings. And we say, Father, take charge. Align our spirit and our body. We align it, oh Lord. And we stand on God's promise. We stand on your promise. And we thank you for we receive the new in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much. I hope that we have been blessed today. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody.